This episode of TRS is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com slash totally rad. Coming up today, we sit down with the Wii and get lost in shadow. Totally rad show. everybody and welcome to the Totally Rad Show for this week starting January 10th. We got a cool week. Yeah, we're starting off with a video game this week, Lost in Shadow on the Wii. Correct, Amundo. Tuesday we're going to be doing another As Seen on TV segment with Dan's Ball, which we're very excited which about. Which has been seen on TV. Which has been seen on TV. What, just one of them. <laughs> uh, I mean, when we were juggling. You'll see. You saw some You'll see. You'll see. Uh, Wednesday we have a new... A uh, segment called On My Radar. Very exciting. The three of us are going to be talking about what's sort of on our radar this week, which is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Thursday, don't we have a, we have a movie thing? We have a, a movie coming out, uh, Green Hornet. We saw Green Hornet in 3D. We're going to talk to you guys about that. And then on Friday, we're going to talk to you about many more movies as we rank them in our segment, Versus. Correct. But all week long, we've got this really awesome background this week. Yeah, it's super very cool. cool. Mike, can you remind me who sent this in? Matt something? It was Matthew Kerslake. Matthew Kerslake. Kerslake, I think it is. I have a feeling he's you... from uh, he's from the UK. Perfect. Uh, so I'm sure we're butchering his last name. But thank you, Matthew. Very, very yeah. cool background. There's that other language they speak there. We we have such a hard time pronouncing yeah. those names. Well, sometimes it's you know Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the show. Show, we're going to talk about a Wii exclusive title called Lost in Shadow. It is a 2D platformer, but the hook of this game is that instead of jumping on the platforms, you are a shadow jumping on the shadow that the platforms cast. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. Basically, you are a, a kid who is at the top of this giant tower and you get thrown off. You're saved by a fairy well, who no, trans- your shadow gets thrown off. You're, the kid's still up there. Right. Well, you, the, yeah, you get transformed into a shadow. Yeah, they fairy like rip the shadow from you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you are on a, a 2D plane of stuff that's cast against the wall, uh, shadows that are cast against the wall. And at certain points in the game, you can manipulate the light source in the room to change the angle at which the shadows are cast on the wall, skewing the background. And then that allows you to platform in different ways. So it's on the Wii, so you're playing with the nunchuck and Wiimote, and you move uh, standard platformer, jump, run. Yep. Uh, Swing. S- Right, and but with the Wiimote, you can point at certain objects in the environment, and they have gr- uh, grip points, and you can then rotate them, which changes their their uh, uh, shadow. shadow. Yeah. Or you can change the light source and move it along a slider in certain areas so that it <clears> skews <throat> the light source. Really interesting idea. Alex, tell yeah. me what you think of uh, Lost in Shadow. I think you really nailed it. It's a super interesting idea for a game. I mean, it's one of those things where you're like, Every once in a while, you just go, "Oh, that's so cool! I'm so, it's so, much. and it's fun. It's a really fun uh, platformer, you know." I I think the corner that I turned on the Wii many many moons ago, I I turned again, and and I think I figured out a good label for it, which is, you know, how sh- playing a first person shooter on the iPad, you just feel like I'm not playing this on the ideal input modem f- mode for this type of game. Right. That's how I feel about certain games on the Wii, and it's when I feel that about games that I go, man, it's really too bad. This is one of those games, in my opinion. See, I feel like this game is uniquely paired to its control mechanism. It seems that way. Very. It seems that way. And when I made, and I, I, because I initially was like, why am I not, why do I still have this feeling when this game clearly is a, then I realized, well, you're not really doing any of that stuff. All you're doing is moving a slider by pointing at it instead of just like, I mean, that could easily have been the D-pad turn, when you're in those moments, right. the D-pad left and right changes the light. Right. And it wouldn't have taken away from the experience. I mean, the experience of me doing it like this, a slider, versus just moving it, it doesn't add, it doesn't, doesn't increase the gameplay, in my opinion. There are some games on the Wii where, you know, Epic Mickey, though it didn't have its, you know, it had its issues, um, you know, s- spraying stuff across the screen, that, that all feels like, you know, manipulating but, stuff. Yeah. But, like, again, the, I only manipulated things when I walked into a room and went, oh, well, I, ha- I have to turn that thing. Right. It was never... But did it I, detract from that? Yeah, because it made me kind of go, 
God, I wish I didn't have to be doing all this stuff. I'm really enjoying this platformer. Mm. The, the jumping, the figuring out where I'm supposed to go when the Echo Chrome moments come, where you're sort of shifting the yeah. actual dimensions. Like, none of that stuff needed to happen. And it's interesting moment. because uh, Echo Chrome 2, of course, uses the move and it lets you actually change the and light that, source. See, and that's a very specific. If that was the point, and that's what I thought this game was going to be, was I have the light source. Yeah. That makes sense. I go, yeah, that's that is why that's the best way to do that mechanic. Mm -hmm. But where this, I really just felt like it was sort of like playing a first-person shooter on an iPad, where you're like, God, my thumb. It would be, I would be so much better at this game if I didn't have to hold a nunchuck. Gotcha. Like this. I have uh, the opposite feeling in some regards to you, but I think I may have felt the same way in another place that may embrace. How, how you reacted to the game. Yes. In that I actually felt like it's one of the first Wii titles that it did make sense to use the the, mm -hmm. the remote. And I actually felt the opposite. Epic Mickey, Mickey, I would have been awesome and proficient if I didn't have to do this thing. Yeah. But, but the game is filled with promise. I love yeah. the concept. I, of course, love the aesthetic, which borrows heavily from the Team Ico games. Yeah. I mean... It's it's kind of I mean it's, it's kind of eco meets limbo in yeah. a way. Eco and Shadow of the Colossus. I mean it, it is both those games. I mean even, even to fighting the shadow guys and even to the Black Cauldron Disney yeah. era cartoon style of that of the young boy and all those things that the uh, eco games do so well. Um, the the concept is so awesome, but the 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 pacing of the great ideas. Is all, I mean, like the, the the gap between when you're doing cool things, you spend so much of the game in combat. The combat I don't think is that yeah, great, yeah, yeah. and just the platforming is okay. But what's so exciting is the really creative ideas that I think the reason why you're saying what you're saying is because you don't even do, do it that often. So then when you do do it, it's like okay, whatever. Uh, that, but you might very I well feel be true. like the, the implementation. I should have been constantly. Yeah. Oh, how do I get? To, oh, zip, 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 zip. Like do the echo chrome thing, and then do the have to pull a light source yeah. so that it leans over here and have to jump to there. I mean, there, there, the gaps between when you do those moments is so vast. It's like yeah. I want to be doing that every second, and it made me realize why I love the game like that. You guys did not. We didn't really play, but prototype. I thought you were shocked why I liked the game like that. That was awful. I and, never um, played it actually. But you so didn't really play it, so I played enough of it to know it was uh, that I hated it. Okay, well, but okay, but, the, but you didn't get to the you get, you get to the point. You didn't see any live action stuff in it, which is awesome. I, I thought it was terrible. Just a defensive prototype. But here's, here's the thing that I, here's the thing that I <laughs> love. Personal opinion is that is that you you're given so many abilities that you didn't get to try. Okay, I got. All, but you're given this this. All flying, gliding, grabbing thing, all, all these of the things, shield did you and uh, an entire season. Yeah, and <laughs> about as much of the prototype as I played. No, no, okay, um, <laughs> twenty-two hours. Um, oh, but, it's on. But uh, but but you're given all those abilities, and then you you can do them. You can play this all that gameplay. You can use to your advantage and to get through situations. And that this game gives you these abilities to do sometimes here and there. You know what I mean? Interesting. Like you don't have it all in your arsenal, and that's what's so fun about it. And that might have very well punctuated the fact that I felt like, well, you could sort of just do these on Right, exactly. You know I, I, mean? I agree with I'm you thinking. guys. It, it didn't it didn't coalesce the idea. It and the light sources appear in random moments where it you don't come across a light fixture and go, oh now I can maneuver it. Right, it's just exactly. like Fajong! Thing like, appears oh, on I guess screen. I got to slide one into way. The, yeah. Like, it, yeah. the the concept it doesn't it, it, it like you said is not integrated. It's not the the ideas are great, but they're not they don't fully flesh out that entire concept. Hmm. And I would go farther and say the real problem. All that is is fine enough. It's a little bit half baked, but it's still interesting and fun enough. Yeah. yeah. The hmm. real thing that holds this game back is the combat. The yeah. combat is terrible. And it's repetitive, and there's tons of it. Yeah. And it's really harsh. The balance of how much damage you take from an enemy compared to uh, how much health they give you back in orbs when you kill them is really off. Yeah, yeah. And if you die, you're dead, and you have to start the entire level over. Mm -hmm. yeah, which that is was a pain so frustrating. Yeah. 
but, but there are some really fun concepts. You know, it, it does a really good job of building up the shadow thing uh, over a while, and there's like, oh yeah, I get it. You can jump on the shadows. I have to get used to that. Okay, and yeah. then all of a sudden, oh, the shadow's on the floor. So even the things up here, the shadow is casting on the floor. So now I'm on the floor. And then there's moments where, oh, now the shadow really skews, like you see um, on a late in the day when your shadow is really pointy on yeah, the ground. Yeah, yeah. And so, oh, that allows me to jump up, and that's really cool. There's a lot of really cool ideas at work. It just doesn't coalesce into a great experience yeah. because the combat is so bad and so frustrating and not fun. You're just mashing that B button over and yeah, over. There's yeah. no skill to it. Well, the we I think the weird thing about the combat is the skill that it seems to want you to develop is the idea of run out and then run back yeah. in. That's yeah, the yeah. Only, that's the only option that you Which have. Is like, this is what, it took me a while, I was dying so much and then I, then I got good at it, yeah. but only because I realized this is what it's it wants stick and me move. to do. Yeah, and you just and that's run all and you've hit got. and then run back. Yeah. And then yeah. run and hit and then it run back, yeah. It doesn't seem yeah. like that's. As soon as I got the sword thing, I was like, oh no, there's combat? Yeah. I mean, literally, it doesn't I had need that it. feeling. I mean, it doesn't need it. It doesn't, it would have been a It would have been a better game. It would have been better if it was more of those like blue-eyed guys where you had to use the environment, use the environment and yeah. your skill. And it's the, not, the yeah. combat isn't a challenge, it's an annoyance. Exactly. Yeah, and, and with death. And the... I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> death isn't a challenge, it's just an annoyance. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, the, the if you come upon the light fixtures, if it felt like this room was all illuminated in a certain way, and then there's these shadow corridors that you come across, which yeah. are these, you know, you Mini load into sub menus or some games. Sub-level, yeah. really, and it loads it, it and it's a self-contained little section that, why did it need to be its own little section? Like, why couldn't you have put those concepts into a level you know of what, yeah. You know what I realized? I, what, maybe? I think those are checkpoints, because after you do that, it saves. Yeah, and they are, they're a way to get health, your health filled up, but it, it still, it just feels clunky yeah. and, Unintegrated, yeah. as we keep saying, it's yeah. just a, it's really good concepts, but yeah. just and and worth playing. I would say an interesting Wii game yeah, and I mean, worth it's, playing. It's fairly inexpensive, right? Philosophically, Isn't it like or something? don't you think it's interesting that if this were a movie, I feel like people would be calling it a ripoff of um, the, the Ico games. You know what I mean? But as a video game. Like that part, the part that it's ripping off theoretically. Like I'm not mad at them for doing it. I'm like cool. Hmm. I, you know what I mean? Hmm. Like I feel like that's not the same thing in video games as it is in, in film. Well, you know what? Everything doesn't have to be like movies, Dan. Ho! Oh, video games. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to stick around for this day in rad history, but we do want to thank our sponsor. Sponsor! Audible.com is one of my favorite sponsors. It's because it's a thing that I find extraordinarily useful. I love books. I think more people should read. But who has time to read? You do now, because you can have people read to you in your ear holes. <laughs> by going to audible.com and signing up for a uh, their, their service. What it is is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books, thousands even, mm. probably more, uh, all read by really talented people. You can multitask, you can, uh, I, I like to run and listen, mm -hmm. drive and listen. Uh, anything you're doing around the house, chores, you can listen to a book and get up on the latest things. Get I recently, I recently read uh, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, listened to it on Audible. Very good reader, actually. Do you, what do you think, can you say read? What do you, what I do, do you think it's that? red. Yeah. yeah, I do think it's red because yeah. it's this. I mean, you're in, in putting in the same way. You're you're dealing with uh, language in the same way yeah. as you would visually. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Uh, and blind people read. So nice. Uh, yeah. Nice intoler they tolerance, Daniel. They're right. They read. Nice that's, that's braille. Uh, anyway, audible.com. Uh, if you go to audiblepodcast.com/slash/totallyrad, you can get a free book of your choice. I highly recommend it. Super awesome. Read more. Amazing. Oh gee. We will see you Read tomorrow. More. Tomorrow, check it out when we play with a magic Fushigi ball. Ooh. So today is Monday, January 10th, and this day in rad history in 1983. Dance chairs away. Henson's Fraggle Rock Where debuts on another HBO. day. Oh. Loved yeah, my, Fraggle Rock. My memory of Fraggle Rock. Loved it. It's not just that song, it's the what a weird thing to be on HBO, right? I mean, like, it's so... My dad had a satellite dish before people had satellite dishes, and I used to get to watch this show. It was my favorite experience. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. I that always, and brain games. Dozers. Yeah. I always, yeah, those are the little green guys. Yeah. yeah. I 
I always wanted to see the show about the green guys, the little glass thing. That yep. they oh, were that making. they would eat that looked delicious. Yeah, never, but never really showcased them. And we would always see the big Snuffleupagus guys that yeah, back, I didn't. The they scared people. me. But my favorite was when they had to go to the backyard to get to the trash heap. Right, to and it was talk. like the scary it was thing. Like the, the Oracle yeah. it was amazing. Thank you, Jim Henson, uh, and also thank you at Hormon. Hormos Day. Hormos Day. H O R M O S Day. Hormos 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 Day.